my name is Simon Scher, and I just realized that I have done tons of tutorials on the correct way to do a kick. A front kick, a round kick, a side kick, a hook kick. Uh, but I haven't done any tutorials on exactly what not to do. So what I've decided to do today is approach the side kick from the other side. Instead of telling you all the things to do to do a good side kick, the pivots, the hip turning over, the chambers, the extension, the body, I'm going to tell you all the things not to do. So here are all the things you should never do when doing a side kick. A quick caveat here, there are lots of different kinds of side kicks, and your style of side kick might not find uh, some of the things that I say to be a faux pas. What I'm talking about here is a full range of sidekick, a full range of motion sidekick with lots of technical details. So basically everything a textbook sidekick should be. You can always make these mistakes, but make sure you're making them on purpose as a shortcut during sparring or for some other reason that I can't possibly think of right now. But in general practice, there's no reason to do any of the things I'm about to mention when you perform your sidekick. Item number one. Leaning backwards. When you're throwing a side kick, you want your body facing the direction you're kicking. You want your upper body erect. If you start leaning backwards when you throw a side kick, you're going to fall backwards. You might even hit a wall and bash your face and get a bloody nose. So keep your upper body up and controlled, erect, pointing towards your target when you throw a side kick. Number two, the knee of the kicking leg should always be the same level as the foot or slightly higher. It should never be below it. If your knee is below your foot in a side kick, you'll either end up doing a back kick or crumpling your leg as your body and hips can't absorb the impact and then spinning yourself around backwards. This can damage your hip, knee, ankle and put you in a bad position uh, while sparring. It could twist you around and let someone jump up behind you and punch you in the back of the head or some other unimaginably horrible thing. Number three, not turning your hips over. Now I talk about the pivot being very important. Your standing foot needs to point the opposite direction. This does several things, one of which I'll talk about in a minute. But not turning your hip over is a big one. If your hips don't turn over, your kicking butt cheek doesn't point toward your target, your toes will point upwards, making the kick supremely less powerful. You want to engage your hamstrings, your gluteus, and your standing leg into the kick. If your toes are pointed upwards, that's not going to happen. And your toes point upwards when your hips aren't turned over. Item number four, the floppy foot. You want to pull your toes back and hit with a solid, uh, tense foot. Just like a solid, tense fist is what you want to hit with when you, when you punch. So when you side kick, you don't want your foot to be floppy like a dead fish. Uh, a dead flaccid fish. You want your foot hard, solid, like a dead frozen fish. Number five, you don't want your arms flailing all over the place when you kick. You want them in a guard position. You want them in a controlled, decided, predetermined position. You want them up, protecting your upper body. You want them punching your opponent at the same time as you kick. Maybe even grabbing someone as you're kicking another person. But you don't want them flailing around like uh, a monkey having a seizure. Or a wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Item number six. Don't hold your breath. You want to breathe out when you kick. That's why we make that tss or cha noise when you throw kicks and techniques to be powerful. We never hold our breath during techniques. The only time you should ever hold your breath when you're throwing a side kick is if you're in a chamber full of a poisonous gas. And I don't advise doing a side kick when in a chamber full of poisonous gas. Just stay away from them. Breathe out when you kick. Don't hold your breath. That tenses your muscles and will make the kick way less powerful and allow you to deal with new situations uh, less effectively. Number seven, forgetting to chamber. You need to pull your knee into your chest and point your leg at the target before you extend your leg. If you don't, you won't have any momentum behind the kick and you can't build up power. And power is a big part of what the side kick is all about. So pull your knee in and thrust it out and then pull it back before you kick. So pull in, out, in, not out, in. Item number eight. Similar to number seven, item number eight is forgetting to rechamber. So you pull your leg in, you kick it out, and then what? You pull it back. So many people forget to do this. After you kick your target, you have to pull the leg back so you can throw another kick. Or maybe if your leg's just hanging out out there, they can catch it. And if you drop your leg down straight, then you can't use it again until you pick it back up. And it's much easier for your opponent to catch, grab, and throw you over. 
This is what jujitsu guys are always talking about. Like, I hate kickers, or I love kickers, because when they kick me, I just grab their foot and throw them on the floor. Well, those are kickers who don't pull their leg back when they're done with the kick. In, out, in. Item number nine. Not extending your leg all the way. Now, if you have a tight muscle or you haven't warmed up, it's going to be tempting not to extend your leg all the way. If you have a, a knee injury or a sore knee or you've been kicking wrong for a long time and your knee is sensitive, then you're not going to want to extend your leg all the way. You want to extend your leg all the way when you kick. That way you hit your target and drive through it. So the kicking leg should straighten before you pull back. So if you don't extend your leg all the way, take some time training your body in slow motion to extend that leg so that you can do it in fast motion. But don't do a stunted side kick. Item number 10, don't close your eyes. You want to see what you're kicking. That's how you can be sure you're going to kick it. When I'm kicking somebody, sometimes they move. And if I have my eyes open and I'm looking at them, I can generally see where they moved and re-aim my kick even as I throw it. Or hop forward. Or not throw the kick at all because it will be a waste of energy because I can see that they've moved because my eyes are open. Don't close your eyes when you kick. A lot of people, they get tense when they kick. And they get scared. And they close their eyes and turn away. Or just close their eyes. Don't do that. Item number 11. I mentioned this earlier, but you want the standing foot to pivot all the way. This forces your hips to turn over, forces you to point your butt cheek towards your target in what I call a butt angulation. If you don't know what that is, check out my video on pointing your butt towards your target. I talk, uh, I talk about that in my using a nerf dart to improve your sidekick tutorial. There should be a link to it somewhere around here. Be all the way pivoted when you kick. If you don't pivot all the way, then you won't have your foot in the opposite direction as a buttress to help absorb that rebound force. It's much easier to twist your ankle if you're not pivoted. A lot of people complain about twisting their ankle when they kick or hurting their standing knee when they kick. That's because they're not allowing their body to pivot all the way. Your standing foot should point to the opposite direction from that in which you intend to kick. If you fail to do this, then you are not pivoting all the way and you're going to hurt yourself and you're not doing a proper side kick. Item number 12. A lot of my fellow ITFers are guilty of this. They think that the bending stance and the chamber are the same thing. They're not. Two completely separate aspects of a, of a kick. In fact, the bending stance isn't even part of a side kick. It's a stance. Like a front stance, an L stance, a rear foot stance, a, a bending stance, a, a one-legged stance, whatever. It's a bending stance. A walking stance. It's a bending stance. And then from a bending stance, you throw a side kick. So you don't want to kick from the same position you're in in a bending stance. You want to chamber your kick and then kick. And then you can put it down. But the bending stance is not part of the kick. So don't flick upwards with your kick. Thrust the kick straight out. Item number 13 is very similar to item number 12. If you chamber too low, you're going to end up coming up into your kick. The side kick is a thrusting kick or a stomping kick. It's not an upwards kick. Even when you kick really high, even straight up, you're thrusting with your foot behind your hip, or your, your foot in front of your hip, your hip behind your foot. So when you kick out for a side kick, you want the knee even with or slightly higher than your foot. If it, if it starts low and comes up into the, in, into the target, then the chances of twisting your ankle are really high. The power will be incredibly diminished. You won't have your body behind the kick. And the chances of bonking your foot on someone's elbow or chin or, uh, or knee but probably elbow, are really, 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 really high. So chamber high, kick middle high or low, and then re-chamber high. Don't drop your chamber. I use this analogy for my students. I say, pretend you're a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. When you chamber, if your leg is too low, you're gonna pee all over it, and nobody wanna pick you up or feed you or take care of you. You'll be a gross pee dog. So don't be a gross pee dog. Keep your leg up high before and after your sidekick. Thank you guys so much for watching my what not to do when you sidekick tutorial. If you disagree with any of these, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm always interested in other people's opinions and potential mistakes that I made. But uh, from all my experimentation and training with the sidekick, this is what I've learned and this is what I tell people not to do. Don't forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe this video. And uh, you know, if you feel like telling some other people about it, that's cool. And also check out the other videos on my YouTube channel when I talk about what actually to do when you're performing a side kick, or a front kick, round kick, hook kick, back kick, twist kick, crescent kick, axe kick, or what have you. Simon Schur, over and out.